Your library's digital signage is every bit as important as the print signs and posters you put up. I have five tips to help you maximize that incredibly valuable space in this episode of the Library Marketing Show. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Angela Hirsch, and I am the person behind the blog, superlibrarymarketing.com. You can head there, look for the Library Marketing Show tab. You can suggest a topic for a future episode or nominate your library or another library for kudos in library marketing. We do have a library that did something pretty extraordinary that we are going to recognize later on in this episode. Before we get to, to that and today's topic, if you haven't yet already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so here. You can also follow me on LinkedIn and you'll get notifications every time I post one of these videos. Digital signage is really important. In fact, I think it might even be more fun, I will say, than regular print signage. And I say that because it's flexible and easy to change and you can do lots of creative things with it. But sometimes it's hard to wrap your mind around how to be effective with your digital sign. So I've got five really quick, easy tips that'll take your digital signage to the next level at your library. These are things I did when I worked at the Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County. We had digital signage in most of our branches and that worked really well. And it was one of my favorite things to program. So here's what I did. First of all, if you are picking software for your digital signage, remember to pick something that's flexible that you can use and put up different promotions at different branches. If you have multiple branches, you want to be able to put signs up and pull them down on a schedule, rotate signs. You want to be able to change the amount of time, a time a sign is up on the screen. And so look for a software that gives you all of those options because that's half the battle with digital signage. Number two is to have a strategy for your digital signage. I want you to think of it not as just a way to talk about programs and services that are happening right now or coming up. You should also have a mix of what I call evergreen content as part of your digital signage. So that is things that never change, like your eBooks, your downloadable magazines, your homework help, your entrepreneur programs, your small business center, all of those things you can mix basically 50-50 promoting current events and current programs coming up and then your evergreen content. You should also tie that to your library's overall strategy so that you're sure that you are helping fulfill those goals. Number three, before you put up any sign, sit and watch how people interact with the screens. You're probably in a position like I was. I did not have a say in where the screens were located. They were just put up by somebody um, who came there before I did. So I had to sit in the space and watch who passes by, how long do they look up at the sign? Do they even see the sign at all? Are they standing there trying to do something else and they're just like bored and there it is? How long do they glance at it? All of those things informed the decisions that I made about my digital signage. So spend a couple minutes, 10 minutes, a half an hour, whatever you have, hanging out in the lobby or wherever your sign is and watching how people interact with it. When it comes to making your signs, this is tip number four, you want large text, big text. Uh, if you do a graphic, I want you to make it simple. If it's a face, like make a face, um, use faces, photos of faces in your digital signs, anything to catch someone's attention, but don't put a lot of words on there and a lot of designs. You want it to be big, bold, and simple to understand. No cursive fonts. And I would say, don't put a URL on your digital signage, unless it's really simple to remember. Something like mylibrary.org slash summer reading. That's very easy to remember. Otherwise, your call to action on your digital signage should be see staff for details or for information. When I was working in a library, I loved that I could use my digital signs to drive people to the reference desk or the, the nearby person on the mobile um, desk that rolled around I could get that interaction going between the patron and the library staffer so that the, the library staffer could match that person and provide them the customer service that they needed. So use your digital signs to drive people to your staff. And tip number five 
is to remember your messages need to really stay up on those screens for quite a while. And it's okay to repeat them over and over again, because people are not, most people are not coming into your branch every day, maybe every week or every month, but you want to make sure that they see them. So you can continue to repeat those messages, which is great for you. Cause that means you don't have to reprogram your digital signs all the time. You can set them and then forget them for a little while and just let them marinate and let people see your signs. So those are my top five digital signage tips. I'm curious what other tips you have from your work in libraries. Let's start a conversation down in the comments below. Let your fellow viewers know how you maximize your digital signage at your library. Okay, it's time for kudos. And kudos today is just a fantastic story. This is a story um, for the St. Helena Public Library. They got a book back that was borrowed 96 years ago. It was actually checked out in February of 1927. They got some great press coverage for this. I will put a link to that down in the show description on YouTube or the comments on LinkedIn. Um, at the time that this book was checked out, the library was imposing late fees of five cents. How quaint. Um, so the overall cost to return that book if we'd had if that person had to pay the overdue fee was $1,700. But of course that didn't happen in the book is actually now on display in the library, which I think is a really cool and fun way to get some interaction. So kudos to St. Helena Public Library for getting this great press coverage out of this cool late um, return. I just think I love those stories. And I think they're really engaging and they catch the attention of potentials community members who may not know about your library. So congrats to you. All right, that's it for this episode, but my channel has lots more tips and advice for library marketing. So if you're interested in that, head to the next video and I'll see you there.